Is everyone feeling super pumped? <laughs> awesome, because we because we have some really exciting stuff to talk about. I'm going to talk about Uber's journey from monorepo to multi-repo and back to monorepo. Thrilling stuff, right? <laughs> awesome. So my name is Amy Lucido. I'm from Chicago originally. This is a picture of uh, me and my boyfriend uh, right after we ran the Chicago Marathon, and I um, and I absolutely died. I don't know if you can tell, but I was about to collapse. I, yeah, I, I look I look wiped. <laughs> Um, I graduated from Brown University, where I majored in computer science and literary arts. Um, I went to Facebook right after that, and I worked on um, the Android Messenger app for a little over two years. I came to Uber right after, which is where I am now, obviously. And I've been here for almost a year and a half, and I work on the rider to driver team, which is a team that bridges the gap between riders and drivers and also converts riders to become drivers. And then sort of a fun fact, um, I'm, I'm currently a student at a school called Hamelin, which is in Minnesota, um, and I'm majoring, I'm, I'm getting my master's of fine arts um, in creative writing for children and young adults. So that's me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, monorepo. What is monorepo? Monorepo, at least in the, t the term, that the way I'm going to use it is about Android specifically. Um, it's where all your code exists in a single repository, like kind of a big box, and all of your code sits in that box. Similarly, multi-repo is the idea that you have a lot of little pieces of code and a lot of little boxes all over you know, the world, kind of. Um, and, the, and, they are, and then you have one master app that has references to all those little pieces of code. So those are the, def the definitions. Um, and I'll tell you a little story about Uber, circa 2012, when we first put out our Android app. We were a very small company at the time, and the team that was working on the Android app was also very small. And so when we decided to build our app, we decided to build it with Monorepo. This has some very obvious benefits. It's out of the box Android. It's just what you get when you open up Android Studio. It's probably what all of us have built in at some point if we have ever built on Android. It has a, if you have everything in one place, you have a single source of truth for everything from coding style to architectural patterns to testing practices, whether that means you have spaces instead of tabs or that you're going to unit test every single public function or that you're going to use very classic MVC model view controller framework. Whatever you decide, that's all in the same place and everything's consistent. This allows for very simple code sharing. If I have a math util, I have one math util. It's something that everyone can use no matter what part of the Uber app you're working in. So Uber circa 2012, we were like, this sounds fantastic, let's do this. And so we did. But there's a dark side to monorepo. Uber circa 2016, we started to get pretty big. In fact, we've been getting big up until this point, but 2016 is when the pain points of monorepo started to kick in. We started to get the dreaded IDE lag. You get to the point where you can't even scroll in Android Studio without your code freezing up. You get Git slowdown. Git does not have something called narrow, narrow clones. So when you're pulling from Git, you're pulling everything from Git. And the bigger your code repository is, the longer that can take. Who here has dealt with a broken master problem? Yeah, it's where you're trying, you're trying to build something and, and nothing builds because someone else broke it, but you're convinced that you broke it and you're like, what is this error? I don't understand what this error means. The bigger your company gets, gets the more frequent those kind of breaks are gonna be. And your build times get really long. I know this, ha this happens pretty quickly, actually, if you're using Gradle. Gradle slows down builds very quickly. So what do we do? Well, if you know anything, if you were paying attention to the title of my presentation, we went to multi-repo. Lovely. Multi-repo has some really great benefits when you start to get to a mid-sized company. This allow, it allows for very strong ownership. So at Uber, we have some code that is in the payments repository, and we have some code that's in the maps repository. And if you're working on payments, you only need to worry about payments. You own payments. Similarly, if you work on maps, you only need to worry about maps. You own it. If you're only building maps, then your build is faster. It's lovely. If you, you don't have to worry about building payments or about building your math util, everything is there. You only have to build one thing. Because you have separate Git repos, you, have, you don't have to worry. You're kind of building your own narrow clone in a way. You only have to pull um, the things that you're actually using. And you isolate the master breakage. If you're on payments, you only have to deal with other people breaking payments. If someone breaks master, who cares? You're working in payments. Sorry, if someone breaks 
maps. You're only working in payments. So the question is, why didn't we do this in the first place? And that's because there's a dark side to multi-repo. Multi-repo for, for a small company is very expensive. There's a lot of overhead in terms of where do you put these artifacts? Like if I have my maps code somewhere, my payments code somewhere, like where is that somewhere? And in order to have enough repositories to justify a multi-repo, you have to have enough things to put in repositories. If you're just building a very simple math util, like what are you going to put in your repositories? Like addition over here, subtraction over there? It's not really worth it. So we're done, right? Well, not exactly. Uber circa 2017, as in today, is very, very big. And we now have hundreds of engineers working on our Android repository. So multi-repo has started to become a little bit unwieldy. In addition to the original downsides of, over of uh, overhead and needing a big code base to start out with, we started to get silos. You know, you'd have tabs over here in maps and spaces over here in payments. You'd have unit testing practices over here and non over here. Or you'd have, this, this was probably the most difficult to deal with, is you'd have traditional model view controller architecture in maps, but then you'd use something totally different like what, our, like what we call Presidio over here in payments. And that, is, that makes it very hard to integrate. We'd start to get fun functionality duplication, so that one math util, the math that one math util that we had in the very beginning, suddenly we have three different math utils and three different repositories. And how would you ever know that there was another one you're supposed to go to? Like you'd have to search for it, and that's a whole other tool you'd have to build. Who here has dealt with dependency hell? Yeah. So those who don't know what dependency hell is, it's the idea that if you have a version, if you have a, if you have a, your math util somewhere, and you're using version one of that math util in payments, and you're using version nine of that math util in maps, what version do you bring into the final the final build? So what then? We've already ruled out mono repo, and we ruled out multi repo, and now we get to the back again, mono repo. And you may be thinking, wait, I thought there was a dark side to mono repo, but as your company starts to get bigger, you can actually invest resources to mitigate some of these original downsides. So your IDE starts to lag, you can switch to IntelliJ, which is what we at Uber did. So even if your IntelliJ starts to lag, you can start to do little things to make it faster. The Git slowdown. At Uber, we actually haven't quite hit this yet. We're still using Git. At Uber, we've instituted something called submit queue, which is a process that ha that runs every time before you land your code to make sure that you're not breaking tests and that all like the sanity check and a little bit more beyond sanity check are all passing before you land your code in order to break it for somebody else. And finally, we switched from Gradle to Buck at Uber. So that, because so, Buck will sort of do these narrow builds. I don't know if that's actually the technical term, um, but you're, but you do these. You can build just the section of code that that you change. You don't have to build the entire thing, which makes for building a mono repo a lot faster. So when you get to a big company size, you can actually invest your resources to make your big company feel like a small company to make the cons turn into pros. And your Uber package can be nice and beautifully wrapped in a single box. Thank you very much.